Good morning. I just want to take a moment to express my gratitude to Brother Lee and each of the elders for the opportunity to present to you a lesson from God's Word this morning. It's been such a great encouragement so far, um, all of us young men being able to have this opportunity. Um, just can't thank you all enough for your kind attention. So what do you think of when you hear the word win? Maybe you think of winning a sports game or a race. Maybe it's finding a job. Maybe it's achieving a goal. Or maybe getting a good grade on a test. I think it's safe to say we all enjoy these things. We enjoy winning. But is it, is, is it still possible to win when things aren't really going our way, so to speak? Is it still possible to be on the winning side? The short answer is yes, but how? And that's what I'd like to dig into this morning, the victory we have in Jesus. There's a man in the New Testament who truly knew how to win. It didn't matter his circumstance. It didn't matter his situation. He knew how to win. And that man was Paul. And I'd like to read from his letter to the Philippians. If you would turn over into Philippians chapter 1. We'll begin there. Philippians chapter 1. And we'll begin in verse 1 in just a moment. Philippians is a book of joy. But as we read, keep in mind that Paul was in prison while he was writing this letter. He was at a loss. His, cir his circumstance wasn't a good circumstance. He was in a bad situation. Keep that in mind as we read, beginning in verse 1. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, with the overseers and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus, Verse 9, and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. His circumstance, he was in prison. We see in verse 7, at the end of verse 7, he says, both in my imprisonment. And then we didn't read verse 13 and verse 17, but he also mentions he was in prison. He could have said, poor me, I'm in prison. I've done all I could for Christ, but it still feels like I'm losing. He could have said that. He could have said that, but he didn't. He actually did the opposite. He was thanking God and he was praying to God for the church. That's taking, that's finding the positives in a negative situation. That's winning. His joy was not dependent on his circumstances. And that's the first thought I'd like you to consider this morning. Paul's joy was rooted in Christ. His mindset was to always find the positives. In Philippians chapter 1, a little farther down in verse 15, 
He says, Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in that, in that, I rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. Verse 21, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. I have this saying that I tell myself, especially when I play sports. It's win or learn. It's not win or lose, it's win or learn. The score may show a loss, the team might have lost, but my response to my performance can be a win. And that's how Paul was. He was physically at a loss, he was in prison, he was persecuted for Christ, but he responded to his situation by focusing on the good. He focused on the furtherance of the gospel. His mind was on something much bigger. It was on Jesus Christ. Can we do the same when something just beats us down, just pounds us into the ground spiritually? I remember a couple of months ago during football season, I, I remember it very clearly. I was in second period calculus class with Mr. Osborne. And the AP walks into the room and whispers my name to Mr. Osborne. And obviously COVID's going around, so my mind's racing. In the middle of football season, I don't want to go out. And of course, guess what happens? I have to go out in the hall, and the AP tells me I was contact traced. So I have to leave immediately. And I was wondering if I was going to be able to play in the next game. And guess what the next game was? The Battle of the Axe. The Marcus High School versus Louisville High School. Actually being played right over here. Long story short, I wasn't able to play. But my team won. But I, I tell you this story because I had to make up in my mind, when I found out I couldn't play, I had to make up in my mind if I was going to go pout in my room for two weeks, or if I was going to focus on the good, stay active, and get ready for the next game I was going to be able to play in. And we have to make that choice when something just beats us down spiritually as well. Physical issues and trying times dramatically impact our spiritual lives. You know, the ref doesn't always make the right call. Might throw a penalty flag, but there's nothing you can do about it. It's just like in life, sometimes there are just things we can't control. Things that we just do not like that put us in a bad situation. But it, it's up to us to seek out the good, to focus on the positives, and remember who our joy is rooted in. Jesus Christ. We have that victory in Jesus. As Jesus was preaching on the mountain, he echoed this thought. If you would turn to Matthew chapter 5 with me. Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 10. Jesus says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. He doesn't say, 
mourn and be sad. He says, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. There's a great example of this in Acts chapter 5. If you turn over to Acts chapter 5, the apostles were being beaten for spreading the gospel, for preaching the gospel. In Acts chapter 5, beginning in verse 40, it says, And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. Wow. That is finding the positives. That is rejoicing in Christ. They knew they had victory in Christ. Paul had joy in his circumstance. They had joy, and we can have joy too in Christ. It doesn't matter our situation. The second thought I'd like for you to consider is that Paul was content. Back in Philippians, if you would turn back to Philippians chapter 4, we see Paul was content. Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 10. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. Again, we see rejoice. In fact, it's mentioned in, in Philippians about 16 times. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. It didn't matter if he was at his highest high. It didn't matter if he was at his lowest low. He learned to be satisfied in any situation. He learned to be satisfied. Well, how did he do that? He knew that he had what he truly needed, and that was Christ. That's all he needed. It didn't matter. Nothing else mattered. You know those football players who just have that face, or maybe it's not a football player, who have that face in like body language, you're like, ah, oh, I'm going to go like run through a wall. I don't care how big or thick it is. I'm going to go run right through it and make a play. We have to have that same mindset as well. I don't care if there's a wall or not. I don't care if there's a difficult time in my life or not. I will get through it because Christ is with me. That's the attitude we need to have. Not because we are great and strong, because Christ is. That is where our strength is found. Not in our muscles, not in our makeup, not in our mind, our money, but in our master, Jesus Christ. That is where our strength is found. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Paul took comfort knowing God was his protection. In Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 6, he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We will gain a peace so great that we can't even comprehend if we hand our concerns and worries over to God through prayer. Paul knew he needed help. Do we? He knew he needed God's strength. 
do we? Prayer is how we'll continue to win. It's comforting. And it will help us be content in any stage of our lives. Paul also knew that Christ already won. As we read from chapter 3 of in, in Philippians, we're going to read verses 1 through 7. And Paul here is talking a little bit about his background and how Jesus transformed his life. I want you to notice the shift in verse 7 when we get there. We're going to begin in verse 1. Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Look out for the dogs. Look out for the evildoers. Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews as to the law, a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church. He was a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness under the law, blameless. Verse 7, But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Whatever gain I had, I counted as loss. We see this contrast of gains versus losses that Paul mentions here. We need to focus on the gains. And who is the ultimate gain? Christ. Christ is the ultimate gain for us. Paul knew the power of Christ's resurrection. That's why Jesus is victorious, through the power of his resurrection. And he kept that so close to his heart. He had everything. He had Christ. And that allowed him to have a peace of mind and to be content. If there's one thing I can leave you with to help you remember this, there's an acronym I'd like to share with you for WIN. And it's from a book that coaches often quote. It's what's important now. What's important now. It's something simple and easy to remember. But it's a question. It's a thought-provoking question. What's important now? It should remind us that whatever situation we're in, whether it be good or bad, we must focus on what's truly important. That we have been saved through Christ and God will provide. So, is it still possible to be victorious during the trials of life? Is it possible to be victorious during the trials of life? Absolutely. Christ already won. But we must remember that our victory in Him is contingent on if we choose to follow Him. It's not a one-time decision. It's a continual choice to obey Him. And if we do, we have reason to rejoice. In 1 Corinthians, if you turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Beginning in verse 57. Paul says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Let us never forget what Christ went through for us and the joy we have through him. Maybe what's important now is that you put on Christ through baptism. If you have not done that, you do not have victory in him. But the good news is you have the opportunity right now. You can put on Christ through baptism, wash away your sins to gain access to that wonderful joy and confidence in Christ. To be on the winning side. If we can help you do that or assist you in any way, would you please come down to the front as we stand and sing?